Hello, everyone, and welcome to VTechra CRM's Tour for a Salesperson. I am Matthew Costello, a customer success consultant here at VTiger, and I'm extremely excited to be showing you some of the features you can use as a salesperson to better improve your conversations and even hopefully close more deals for your company. So to go over for the, the agenda for today, uh, I'll be first doing a brief overview of VTiger as a company, although we're moving on to the sales process. I'm sure you are familiar with this already. Uh, if you've had any interaction with the sales funnel, this is pretty similar to that. It might be defined a little differently from what you're used to, but that's what I'll be using to break up the features I'll be showing later on in the webinar, which brings me to the third portion of our agenda, the features. And this will include such things as the actions page, the dashboard, importing leads, even uh, the calendar and a ton of other features. Um, so let me jump into just giving you a brief overview of what VTiger is as a company and what we, what we specialize in. Um, so we were founded in 2004 and we're among the first to implement a unified customer one view concept in a CRM. And what the one view concept is, is it's, it's this idea, this feature that you can go into a, a record of a contact or a lead and you can quickly see all the interactions you've had, whether those are emails, maybe you've set up web chats, um, or even if you have other related uh, internal records, such as maybe a quote or an invoice, you can view all that very quickly on one page on the contact record. We are a, an innovator in the CRM industry. We have an industry leading open source CRM with over 5 million downloads up to date. We are trusted by over 300,000 organizations to drive their mission critical processes. In 2010, we ended up launching our cloud version, which is the version I'll basing the features I'll be showing today. And we have three offices globally uh, in Austin and Bengaluru in India. I am actually based in the Austin, Texas location. So let's jump into the sales process. So I broke this up into five stages. Uh, the first one is research and prospecting. And this is just having the tools available to know your product, your ideal customer profile, the competition, and the success stories that you've created, and then build a list of prospects around that information. What this usually entails is having documentation that's easily accessible and quick to find that you can access and read very easily. It's also important to uh, have an easy way to build out your prospects in the CRM, whether that is through importing or creating leads on social media. The second stage is qualification. And this is assessing the prospect's needs and product fit. Some of this might be due through market, marketing content you put out that a customer interacts with, and that might give you a little bit of detail in their interest in the product. A bigger one is usually conversations you have, initial conversations you have with a prospect. And that can help you build up sort of what they're looking for and if your product even fits their needs. Once you know your product's a good fit um, and they agreed to have a demo that leads you to the third stage where you present your value proposition or give your, your physical demo. And this is just preparing that demonstration of your product for an interested prospect. And this usually involves having all the information of your previous conversations readily available and uh, having it all listed out for you so you can build out that demo based off what your customer requested or the prospect requested. The fourth stage is objections handling, and this will usually come up after the demo. Uh, I'm sure you've run into it where maybe uh, they want to negotiate pricing, or maybe they aren't the best person to be talking to about it if the scope has gone beyond what they're capable of handling within their company. Um, so objections handling is just being able to handle those questions or objections about your product, company, or even the other subjects that might come up. And then the fifth stage is finally closing the deal which is just handling those final negotiations and reviewing the purchase agreement and sending off documents to be signed by the prospect. So before I get into the full details of the features, I do kind of want to cover a new um, addition we've added to the CRM called VTiger Calculus. And this actually plays a huge part in the sales process and what you can do in the CRM. And the reason I'm adding it here and just having these short descriptions is because we are hoping to do a full webinar just focusing on VTiger Calculus in the future. 
um, which we're going to go into these in much more detail. Uh, but I just want to kind of cover a few of the, the biggest ones you can use as a salesperson. The first one is the best time to call. So calculus is a, it, it specializes in AI. So it uses AI to analyze historical data. It correlates those data points from a myriad of sources to recommend the best time to contact someone, whether it's an existing customer or maybe a lead. So you know when you should call them, if you're doing a cold call, or even to send out an email, that's most likely to get a response. The second feature is next steps. Uh, so what calculus does is it monitors actions on records happening within the CRM. And based on that historical activity, it actually recommends an action uh, that you should take on a customer record. So if it knows usually at a certain stage of the sales process, um, a call is usually needed, it'll recommend you make that call. The third one is the email assistant. So we, we've integrated this email assistant. So it helps you stay on top of customer conversations, but it, it really does it with suggestions on content to send when you're applying to emails. So if you've built out documents that include maybe comparisons with other products um, from your competitors or similar, similar things like that, it'll actually recommend those if it notices those context clues coming up in conversations. And the fourth one is coaching. And this one's pretty huge. Uh, this one is actually still in the works, but what it does is it monitors the quality of calls and emails. And it allows you as a salesperson to see maybe where you're falling short on calls or maybe where grammar mistakes happened in emails. Uh, so you can work and fix those in the future. Uh, it also will let you send them off for review by maybe your sales manager. Uh, so you can get a manual review of it and, and get even more thorough feedback in that way. So let's jump into the full bulk of the features I'll be going over in this webinar. And these, this first batch I'm gonna be showing are based on research and prospecting. So the first one is the My Sales Dashboard. And if you're in, in V7 and you haven't had a chance to look at V9 yet, this dashboard is actually from our new UI release, uh, which is V9. V9 was a, primarily a, a release for UI, but we are coming out with a lot of new features as well for this new edition of VTiger that we're really excited about. Uh, so this dashboard is actually what uh, the dashboard looks like now in V9. And with this dashboard, you're able to quickly get some information that you need based on the deals that you have, your lead follow-up time, how many follow-ups are happening per lead. Um, and all this happens in the default My Sales dashboard. So a lot of these are already available, but you can also easily add additional widgets which can pull in new information in one of these, these blocks. On top of that, you can also create new dashboards. So if you want one for sales, but you might want one for specifically just your personal notes or other information in the CRM, you can create those additional dashboards as needed. The second one is the documents module. So this one's huge for uh, the research portion of, of this uh, sales process. So what this does, it, it allows you to either you or generally your salesman will build out the content available here. And some of this could be a discovery call scripts. Some of this could be uh, more information on new features coming out in your product. It could even be more information about how you compare to other companies in your industry space. Uh, so this is usually where you can find great material to uh, read up on and learn more about your product and your uh, prospects that you might be reaching out to in additional content like that. On top of that, this is also where you can add uh, documents that you've built out that should be shared with customers. Um, so if that's maybe a, a sales deck or, or other information that could be useful to sending out to a uh, cold lead, uh, you can add it here and quickly add it into an email and send it off. This next one is importing your leads. So of course, a big, big part of using a CRM is having your leads available in the CRM. Yeah, one, one step to do this is importing your leads to a CSV file. This process is very easy. So if you happen to have your information in an Excel or a CSV file, um, you just wanna fill out the uh, columns. The top row would be the columns for each, each one. So it could be first name, last name, maybe email address, other information you want for them. And then you can have all your lead information for each individual row. 
Um, and then you can import them in to the module you would like. Uh, usually we recommend importing them into the contacts module um, and then simply map the fields, set up duplicate handling, and then you can import your contacts. So VTiker in which is another way in which you can create prospects in your CRM. So VTiger Enrich is a Google Chrome add-on. So when, once you download it for Google Chrome, it actually will show up as a tab. And if you notice the screenshots I have on the right-hand side of the screen here, um, you can quickly quick, uh, click on the tab that shows up there and it'll allow you to, it'll pull in that information from a social media profile, whether it's from LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And you can fill out the rest and create a contact right from their social media page, which can be a, a really easy way to create leads, especially if you primarily use LinkedIn or maybe uh, even Twitter or Facebook for your leads. So now that you've done your research and prospecting, the next step is going to be qualification. And the first feature I wanna focus on when you're qualifying leads is using two features, the profile rating and the engagement score. So the profile rating uses uh, built-in rules. Generally, your admin, your sales manager will set up these rules. So it focuses on um, maybe if they're a CEO, that aspect of it gets five stars and they can set that up for a number of different fields um, in relation to how much of a decision maker they are or maybe how big the company size is and, and things like that. And then we'll give an average profile rating for that, for that lead or that contact. So this is a great way to know who you should prioritize. So obviously a, a profile rating with five stars is a really great customer fit for your product. The engagement score is another one that I think is, is great to use as a, a way to know who to reach out to and who might have the most interest in your product. So the engagement score is uh, it's calculated by uh, when someone interacts with something you send to them. Uh, so if you send them uh, an email and they open that email, uh, that'd be uh, at one point to the engagement score. Uh, if you send them documents alongside that email, if they open that document, that's an extra point to the engagement score. Um, so it, it'll keep adding up these engagements they have with your with your content and with what you're sending them. Uh, so you can you get to know uh, maybe how reactive they are to uh, you reaching out or, and, and the conversations that you've had. The second one is the call, email, and SMS integrations in the CRM. So once these have been set up, you can quickly hover over a contact record in the CRM and directly call them there. You can directly send them an email. You can also quickly send them an SMS message, all, all just from the list view of the contact which is a, a very, very easy way to reach out to someone very quickly. So if, you're, if you have the phone call integrated into the CRM and you go to make that call, maybe from the list view, a, a call pop-up screen will show up. So this will be available the entirety of the call. And what's great about this is it allows you to take notes during the call. So this doesn't mean you, need to, you, don't, you won't have to run out and grab a physical notepad and pen, or you won't have to pull up a separate uh, software platform to take notes on. You can take them directly here, and then they'll be linked to the contact uh, once you save it after the call. Another great thing about this pop-up is you can also directly create a deal, or if, if you might be on the support side, a case. So this takes me to one of the most what I think integral features within the CRM, the inbox. Uh, one of the biggest aspects of the inbox is being able to one, set up your own personal inbox, but also do it through two-way integration. So we have a number of two-way integrations available. Uh, you can do it through Gmail, Office 365, and we also do it through a, a lot of IMAP providers. And, and setting up that two-way sync is extremely easy. You really just need to sign, uh, log into your Gmail account once you're going through that initial setup process. And then you can just choose which uh, uh, inboxes you'd like to bring over. So if you wanna bring over like your inbox and your sent 
emails and maybe your, your trash from your Gmail account and you can pull them into the CRM that way. Another great thing about the inbox is you can actually create group mailboxes. Um, so if you wanted an inbox just for say your sales team, that's based around one email. And in our case, it's sales at btagger.com to give you a, a personal example. But with that group and inbox, it allows maybe interested leads or, or prospects to reach out to that uh, sales email instead of having to reach out to individual emails. And you can add users into that group mailbox so they all have access to it. And you can all see um, emails coming into the sales email address. Another great thing to note is the actions you can take on an email that has been sent into your inbox. So you can choose to set it as done, which is this check mark here, and remove it from the list of emails. You can also actually set directly set alerts to it, and you can link it to records. So there, there's a lot of things you can do with an email once it's in your inbox in the CRM. So it's really versatile. And I want to add just one more thing. You can, so these emails, when you have two-way sync set up, they actually automatically link directly to a contact record as well. So if you have two-way sync set up and a contact sends, a, sends in an email from their email address that already has a contact record built in the CRM, that email will be linked to that contact record as well as showing up in your inbox. So that's extremely helpful if you're going through contact records and need to look up previous emails you've had, they'll actually be in that contact record as well. So actions are a great way to get notified when clients open your emails or documents. Um, so when you set up that e email two-way sync, you will actually have email tracking. And instead of just saying action, because this is actually in the actions page, but this primarily more so is in the engagements tab on the actions page. Um, so it lets you view the opens that you've had for your emails that you've sent. It lets you look at replies that you've had to emails that you've sent. You can even see downloads that have happened for documents you've sent and reshares. So if someone reshared a document that you sent them to someone else, you can see when that happens as well. So this is a great way to keep track of the interactions you've been having with people and, and see who's opened your emails and see who might be interested in the, the information you're sending them. So this takes me to hierarchies. And in this specific hierarchy, the, uh, sorry, the, uh, organization hierarchy. Actually, this is the, sorry, this is the contact hierarchy. The next one is actually the organization hierarchy. So the contact hierarchy allows you to set up a hierarchy for uh, contacts that are in the same organization. So this really lets you know where someone falls within an organization and keep track of who the decision makers are. Um, so say if you uh, reach out to enterprise level companies and you know you might have 30 to 50 people you have contact records created for, it's really helpful to know where they fall within the organization and know who might be the next one to reach out to if someone says they're not the person to, to be in contact with. So this hierarchy can really help make simplify that process. Uh, this leads us to or, the organization hierarchy. And this is in a similar situation. So sometimes organizations, uh, smaller ones can be actually fall under umbrella corporations that own them. Uh, so instead of talking to someone at that uh, smaller company, you also need to be speaking with someone at the, the company that owns them. Uh, so this is just a great way to know sort of where these organizations can, can fall in relation to the, each other and keep track of that. So email sequences are another feature that is actually new in V9 and is extremely useful. So especially because uh, I'm sure you've had to send off a number of emails manually. So you send off one, you might wait a few days and send off another to still gauge their interest or share a little more information about your product. Um, and then maybe send another one four or five days later uh, as maybe a third follow-up. Uh, it's just part of the, that initial sales process. So what a sequence does, it allows you to not have to worry about sending those additional manual emails. So you can actually create your own email sequence. So say you want just that initial introduction email, um, sort of maybe you're asking for a meeting and explain a little bit about your product. And you can set requirements for the following emails that fall within that sequence. 
Um, so if, if you want the second one to come, maybe if they open their email, your email after three days, you can send that second email um, and then so on and so forth. So instead of having to send all those out manually, you can just select the sequence and just set it to run. So you don't need to think about sending those manual follow-ups anymore. And now I wanna jump back into the actions page and this time focus on the My Actions tab in the Actions page and specifically how they can show idle contact reminders. Um, once again, this kind of goes back to um, keeping track of who you need to follow up with can be really difficult, uh, especially which days you need to follow up with them on. So the idle contact reminders can help you keep track of that. So if you know you want to get a notification if, if a lead is idle past a number of days, in this case, we have it showing up when an idle is or when a lead is idle since 30 days ago, uh, you can have that show up here and know, okay, I need to reach out to Harry Spencer and Patrick Lee. Uh, so it, it's, it's a great way to keep track of who you need to contact that day. And this one is actually going to blend into the next uh, sales process portion I'm going to focus on, but I thought it was a little more important here. Um, and you can, this is sort of the Kanban view in the deals module. So what this does is it allows you to quickly view pipelines at a glance. And so you can quickly jump between pipelines. Um, so if you have a number of pipelines, maybe you have an enterprise pipeline and then maybe a, a pipeline for smaller organizations, you can quickly jump between those. And using Kanban view, you can quickly see where these organizations are falling in your sales process. So whether that's a requirements gathering or need analysis or even uh, building out a solution for them, uh, you can you can create that pipeline and quickly see in place organizations within it. And uh, another one I wanted to bring up here as it still falls in the, the deals module is the journey tasks. And I, I thought it felt, felt a, a little bit better here than it did in uh, the value prop demo section, um, just because this lays out all the tasks you will need to take on a deal for each stage of the pipeline it's in. So it, it really helps lay out what you need to do to get that pipeline at the next stage. So you, you'll know uh, you might need to build out the customer profile. You might need to add the business email and add the business phone and get the title and the role of who you're in contact with. Um, so it, it takes away a lot of the guesswork that might come with starting a new deal with an organization. Um, it, it, it also helps prepare to prevent objections coming up in the future because you'll know ahead of time, okay, I, I know I'm, I'm talking to the right person. I did that journey task. You'll also know, okay, I've been in constant contact. I sent the correct number of emails and I've already had this demo and it's shown because I completed that journey task. So it really is, a, it's a great way to keep track of what needs to be done in each stage of the deal. And this takes us to the, the value proposition and demo portion. So when you're preparing a value proposition or, or demo, a big part is knowing what that customer wants to see. So it, this can of course depend on the product you're selling or the service you're selling. Uh, but usually in the early stages when you're qualifying them, you pick up on what, what they expect, what they want to see, what, what their needs are. Um, and what we've added is, is we have this deals one view that helps you quickly find that information when you're building out the demo. Um, and the, the big portion I wanna focus on here is one, this uh, section up here, this is actually part of Calculus AI. Um, it's the deal executive view. Uh, so it gives you a, an analysis of how likely that that deal is to close. Uh, so this is the 76 out of 100. And this is actually um, pulling from uh, historical data on all the previous deals you've done in the CRM. Uh, so it, it's a pretty complex backend process, but it, it, we've actually found it's, it's pretty accurate um, and, and knowing sort of uh, how likely you are to close the deal. Uh, the second one is the predicted close date. And once again, this pulls from that historical data from all deals and, and actions that have been taken in those deals. 
and gives a predicted close date based on all previous deals that have closed that have been in a similar situation as the one you're working on. The third is the engagement score. I um, mean, that's actually one I showed earlier. And, and the fourth is the sentiment score. And so this is actually calculated. Uh, it's actually a pretty interesting process. Uh, so when you hold uh, phone calls and when you have meetings, you have the option to choose a manual sentiment for how you felt that went. Um, but what this also does is it analyzes um, email conversations and sort of the sentiment behind or, or the wording, the sentiment behind the wording that they've used. And it uses that as well to create this average sentiment score for this deal. So you can know going into it sort of how that this prospect has been reacting to the interactions with you and sort of the interactions with the product itself up to this point. And overall, what this one view does is it allows you to quickly find not just that, that executive uh, brief, which is extremely useful, but uh, you have this additional one view. Uh, so you can quickly find the contacts that are related to this deal. You can find the organization that's related to this deal. You can also go into the activity section and find all the interactions that have taken place in relation to this deal, which whether they're emails and phone calls and pull up those records so, so it allows you to have all this information very uh, just at the, the tip of your, like right at hand, so you can just grab it and, and quickly use it to create that demo that you need. Um, in, in a similar vein, so the one view will not show documents, but the documents tab on the deal will show up, all, will bring up all related documents. And these could be ones that you've sent to the prospect during the uh, maybe even the qualification stage. So in this one, you might have sent uh, been about, in this case, the company's called Grass Pods, but it could be uh, even just, yeah, that, a, a brief summary of what your product is. Uh, and you could also, may have, you may have sent some quotes to them in this process, and those will show up here as well. Uh, so it's a great way to know what has been sent and what they've interacted with. Going deeper into the activity section I mentioned earlier, so we, the activity section not only shows you all the, the touch points that you've had or internal comments that have happened between your team or even updates to the record themselves, but it, it allows even greater customizability with the filters option. So you can choose if you just want to see the emails, you can choose only emails, or you can choose just the phone calls or even just meetings, and you, it'll just show those records by filtering those out. You can also choose to roll up information. So if you have that contact organization linked to the deal, you can choose to roll up internal comments or roll up touch points. And all those uh, comments or touch points that happen in those other linked records will then show up in the deal as well. Another great feature um, built off the activity section because you can actually comment to your internal team from the activity section and mention other users or groups uh, within the CRM and they'll get a notification of it. But if, if maybe some important information was shared in a comment, you can sticky that comment. In this case, it's, it's on a case, but this is also available in deals. You can sticky it and it'll always show up right here in the top in this, uh, in this section here. So it'll always be very easy to find that information from that comment instead of getting lost maybe in all the other interactions you've had. Another big one is that you can easily see, we just a really short summary of the linked contacts. And this sort of goes back into the sentiments that I mentioned earlier as well. Um, because not only is the sentiment score, if you notice, it is slightly different on the deal and on the AI executive brief. And that's because the, the AI executive brief actually pulls the information, not just from the meetings and calls you've had that you set manually, it, it pulls it from that historical, maybe those emails that you've had, it actually analyzes everything in all interactions. Uh, where, whereas these individual sentiment scores, the one from the contact and the deal, uh, focuses more on the ones that you've manu manually set. Uh, but it, you can actually get a little sentiment score for the contact themselves, which is independent from the deal that you're working on. 
And again, that's just a great way to sort of know what to expect when you go into talking with this, this person. Another very useful tab in the deals module is the uh, products tab. So what this does is it, it actually shows all linked products to the deal as well. So of course, uh, when you're talking with a prospect at a certain point the, the products themselves will get brought up and they might discuss or bring up the ones they're interested in. So you can link those products to the deal and they'll show up in this tab. And what's great about that is it actually gives a brief description of the product just by going into this tab where you can see it, it shows the product name, the part number, um, the, the price, the quantity that are in stock. So maybe if this person calls back in and was like, oh, how much was that portable, project, portable projector again? You can just quickly go into the product tab in the deal and, and find the price there instead of having to navigate even further into the product record. So when you're working on a deal, uh, usually at a certain point, you'll need to link or create a new record from within the deal. And you can do that by clicking on the three dots in the top right. And, and here, if there's a new contact you need to add, you can quickly add them here. You can also create a sales order, an invoice, even an entire new project. It can all be done with the three dots. Um, in addition to that, you'll notice there's three other options here. This send you, lets you send an email. This will let you call them directly. And this will let you edit the deal record and all the information that's on there. Now, of course, once they're ready to get that, that demo or that volume prop from, the, that from you, there is an in-person meeting that needs to happen. And using a point, the appointment page feature is a great way to do this. So with the appointment pages, you can uh, set the times you're available based on the business hours that have been set for your, your CRM and, and your profile. And you can also uh, leave a little, have a message show up for them, uh, whether it's showing what the agenda is going to be. It could, you could even have additional questions you wanna ask them that you wanna get before the meeting happens. Um, so that'll show up when they're setting that appointment or when the prospect is, and then they can choose the date that works for them and the time that works for them, and then schedule that meeting that will show up in the calendar of your CRM. And I once again want to jump back into the actions view real quick. Um, just because uh, another big part of the of my actions tab is the upcoming events. So once that meeting is scheduled, uh, you'll actually get uh, notifications in the actions view page of which ones are coming up today, which ones are coming up tomorrow. Um, but not only that, but you also get uh, physical notifications that you have those meetings that are upcoming. Uh, so it's another great way to keep track of what is planned for today or tomorrow. And you, then you can work around that. And then once you give that demo, of course, objections will be coming up. Um, whether they're price-based or the, around the product themselves, uh, they do happen. And being able to handle those well is extremely important. Uh, a big one that can help with that, and one thing that usually doesn't always happen, but occasionally it does, is maybe you're, you've had a few conversations or maybe it's, it's a, the first conversation with a contact in an organization, and they mention that they're not the best person to talk to in the organization. Um, so when you're creating these contacts, you're able to set uh, what their role is in their organization. And that's a great way to track if you're speaking with the right person. So if you know ahead of, so if you set someone as a decision maker ahead of time, you can quickly see that in the contact record related to the deal. And so you know, okay, Michael Simmons is the one I need to be talking to uh, to move this deal forward. Another big one is usually based around price. Um, and uh, of course it's, it's expected. Um, some people will ask for discounts. Some people ask if they can bundle items, um, and so on. Uh, usually what this requires is that you need to modify the price of a quote. And when you do that, sometimes it goes beyond the boundaries that are uh, available to you. So you have to send it off for approval by a sales manager. Uh, so what our approvals feature does 
is it allows you to quickly send off that new quote price for approval to a manager. They will get that notification immediately and they can quickly approve or, or deny the uh, request you sent for that uh, new, new discount. Another big one is, and this is one I've actually found to be very useful, is going back to that uh, comment section in deals. Because uh, usually when you're working on a deal, it's not just you. Uh, you usually have to work with your, maybe it's even your, it's your marketing team, or maybe you're working with your product development team. Uh, but sometimes you need to get additional questions answered. Uh, so the comments can allow you to quickly mention specific users or groups and have uh, that internal conversation through the comments. It can also allow you to leave just uh, comments to yourself or about the deal uh, on, the, on the deal page that can be quickly found. Uh, and maybe if multiple people are working on the deal, they'll have access to that information very easily. And this takes us to the final stage of the sales process, which is closing the deal. Of course, one of the, the big aspects of closing a deal is sending off a, a finalized quote. And you can easily, as I, as I mentioned previously, if you click on those three, three dots in the top right of the deal, you can easily create a quote. And so what the quote does is it, it pulls in the information already available in the deal. So it pulls in all the deal line items. So that could be the contact name. It could be the, uh, the products that are linked to the deal. It'll pull all that into the quote. So it just takes a few clicks to create this deal in relation to the, uh, yeah, the, the deal that's happening, which can save tons of time. The other one is that we have an integration with DocuSign. So if, if you build out documents using DocuSign, you can quickly uh, send off those documents for uh, a digital signature and they can come back. And so it can really simplify the, uh, the process of closing on a, on a deal. And this again, if, if you remember how we selected the email sequence in an email, this document can be selected in almost the same way. So when you're sending off an email, you would just choose to send off the document instead and choose the DocuSign one and send it off. So that sums up all the closing features, but there's one more item I wanted to discuss, which is the new VTagger CRM mobile app, which works alongside VTagger 9. And this sort of encompasses everything I've covered. Uh, it, the mobile app just allows you to have access to it on your mobile phone, uh, which can be great if you are if you travel quite a bit or you don't always have your laptop with you. Uh, the mobile phone gives you access to all the same features. Um, and even some additional ones. So if you have to do a lot of work that's on site, you can set on site meetings and actually check in on the mobile app to those on site meetings and then check out once you leave. And it'll keep track of that time that you spent on that meeting. Another one is the business card scanner. I know business cards may not be as big, but a lot of people still use them. And so what the business card scanner does is it allows you to use your uh, camera on your phone and you can scan the business card and it'll pull in the information and add them as a contact, which is really cool. Um, so that's sort of a, a breakdown of the features that you have access to as a sales rep and VTiger. Um, so the, ultimately a CRM helps simplify multiple assets of your company and even just your life as a salesperson. And there's a lot here that we haven't covered. Um, so we covered just going over what, what you can do as a sales rep, but there's so much more, whether it's customization or inventory or, or projects, or even the help desk and marketing features. Uh, so we really would like to hear any topics you would like us to cover in future webinars. So, so please reach out to us and share those. And here are the best ways to reach out to us. Um, so we do have live chat available in our, both directly on our website. And if you're logged into the CRM, you can email us at support at or call us directly. We love to hear from you. Uh, thanks for watching.